Good morning. Hello and welcome everyone. In today's world where digital ecosystems are expanding faster than ever, security can no longer be a afterthought. It must be engineered, built in, not bolted on. I am thrilled to invite you to a comprehensive 12 part video series on security architecture and engineering, a foundational and advanced exploration that bridges theory, practice and governance. Whether you are a student beginning your journey or a cyber security practitioner refining your craft or a compliance professional aligning systems to regulatory mandate, this series has been thoughtfully created for you. In phase one, we set the groundwork with core concepts. We unpack security models like Bella Podala, Biba, Clark Wilson. We understand system architecture and its principles, including the trusted computing base and the reference monitors. We'll explore preventive, detective and corrective controls. Evaluate systems through common criteria, TCSEC and ITSEC and dwell into cryptographic design and secure system components like hardware, firmware and softwares. That's phase one. In phase two, we move into deep technical exploration. Here, we explore security design principles like defense in depth, least privilege and fail secure. You learn about enterprise architecture frameworks such as SAPSA, TOGAF and Zachman. We'll also cover secure coding, SDLC security integration, engineering focused vulnerability management and dwell into architecture for embedded systems, IoT, mobile, cloud native platforms and containerization. You will gain insights into hardware based securities like TPMs, HSMs, secure boots and trust zones as well as emerging domains like zero trust architecture, confidential computing and the impact of AI ML on architecture. In phase three, we'll turn the spotlight to real world relevance through threat model modeling methodologies like Stride, Dread and Pasta. We will analyze actual breaches, what went wrong and what could have gone right. These case studies will contrast vulnerable versus resilient architectures, giving you blueprints for building secure enterprise patterns while avoiding anti-patterns that exposes organizations to risks. Finally, in phase four, we will converge technology with governance. We will explore how to map architectural design to standards like ISO 27001, Annex A, NIST SP 800-160 and others. We learn how to perform architecture level risk assessments and how to design systems that are not only secure, but compliant with global regulations like GDPR, India's DPDP Act, HIPAA and PCI DSS. Each episode is crafted with clarity and depth, backed by real world examples, theoretical models and regulatory insights. My goal is to demystify complex security concepts empower you to design defensible systems and help you think like a security architect. So if you are passionate about building systems that are secure by design, resilient by architecture and governed by compliance, this series 
is for you. Please subscribe, follow along and join me in this transformative journey into security architecture and engineering. Let's build a safer digital world, one secure design at a time. This is your host, Savit Vithal Salian. Namaskar. Security Architecture and Engineering Part 2 Trusted Computing Concepts Trusted Computing Concepts have five distinct areas Trusted Computing Base TCB Security Perimeter Security Kernel and Reference Monitor State machine model, assurance levels and protection mechanism. Trusted computing concept. These concepts relates to building systems that can be trusted to behave securely. Let's look at in with an example, the two examples. Starting off, the core part of a system responsible for enforcing security policies. If the TCP fails, the whole system security can be compromised. That's Trusted Computing Base or TCB. Example, let's take a theoretical example. In a secure operating system, the Trusted computer, Computing Base includes the kernel which enforces access control, the authentication module, which is like login services, the file access control that checks the permission, and audit, audit logging system that tracks user actions. These components are trusted because if any one of them fail or is compromised, the security of the entire system could be at risk. Thus. The TCP is the minimum set of components that must work correctly for the system to remain secure. Let's look at a real world example. We take here the SE Linux. The security enhanced Linux is an example where the TCP includes the Linux kernel. The SE Linux security module that enforces mandatory access control policy and system level configuration file that defines the security label. Now, if any of these are altered maliciously, the entire system's access control enforcement could be bypassed, highlighting their critical role in the TCB. Security perimeter is the boundary around the system where the TCP and its protection mechanisms are enforced. That's the security perimeter. From a theoretical example perspective, in a traditional corporate network, the security perimeter is the boundary that separates the trusted internal network from the untrusted external internet. At this boundary, security controls such as firewalls, IDS, IPS, web proxies are installed. They are deployed to inspect and control the traffic entering or leaving the network. Inside the perimeter, users and systems are considered trusted. Outside, they are untrusted. This is a classic castle and moat model. If you look at from a real world perspective, if you take the cloud and the modern environment, in a cloud computing, the traditional perimeter has become blurred. Organizations now use a virtual security perimeter through cloud firewall, virtual private cloud, zero trust principles, wherein we treat every request as coming from outside. Micro segmentation to create 
smaller internal perimeters. For example, in a multi-tiered web application hosted on AWS, the web server tier might sit in a public subnet with firewall rules. The application and the database tiers are placed in private subnets behind additional control, thus creating multiple layered perimeters. Security kernel and reference monitor. This, the security kernel is the part of the TCB that enforces access control. The reference monitor is a concept that ensures every access request is checked, always invoked and tamper proof. Example, imagine an operating system where every time a user or a program tries to open a file or access a memory or communicate with other process. A central component checks who is making the request, what they are trying to do, whether they are allowed to do it, of course based on a policy. This component is the reference monitor, a concept that enforces access control. The security kernel is the software and the hardware implementation of this concept. It must be tamper proof, always invoked and small enough to be tested and verified. So every access goes through the security kernel which enforces the rules be defined by the reference monitor. From a real world example perspective, in Microsoft Windows NT and its successor, the Security Reference Monitor or SRM is a real implementation of the reference monitor concept. It enforces access control policies, evaluate access tokens against security descriptors and decides whether to allow or deny the access. It is implemented within the Windows kernel, effectively forming the security kernel. This thus ensures that every access request goes through the SRM, fulfilling the reference monitor properties. state machine model. It's a way to describe system behavior, thus ensuring the system only moves from one secure state to another. Example, imagine a secure banking system. It can be in one of the several states such as logged out or logged in or logged in as a regular user or logged in as an admin user or it could be a session expired state. Each state defines exactly what actions are allowed. For instance, in the logged out state, no account data can be viewed. In logged in state, only specific actions are permitted based on the user role. The system only moves to a new state like logged in after validating the credential. This is the state machine model. The system transitions from one state to another only after verifying that the transition is secure. It ensures that the system is always in a known, authorized and secure state. Example of state machine model in real world. Well, the Bell La Powderla model used for enforcing confidentiality is based on the state machine model. Each 
access request transitions the system to a new state. If a user reads a document, the system moves to a new state reflecting that action. The bell Lapodala ensures that this new state preserves confidentiality. For example, a user cannot read data above their clearance level. Each state is secure and transitions between states are strictly controlled to prevent data leaks. Assurance Levels and Protection Mechanism Assurance is confidence that a system will act securely. Protection mechanisms like encryption, access control and login help enforce this. As an example, an organization is developing a healthcare application that handles sensitive patients data. The developer wants to assure management and the regulator that the system is secure. To provide high assurance, they perform code reviews and penetration testing. They use formal method to mathematically prove that access control logic is correct. Then they implement multi-factor authentication and end-to-end -end encryption as protection mechanism. The assurance level here is high because the system has undergone a rigorous testing, verification and documentation. The protection mechanism are the technical control which are in place to enforce this security. Let's now look at real world example. Common criteria. The common criteria framework in this evaluates the IT products and systems for security. It defines evaluation assurance level from 1 to 7. EL1 functionally tested, that is basic assurance. Whereas EL7 is formally verified, designed and tested. Very high assurance. For example, a commercial firewall might be certified at EL4, which is structurally tested and reviewed. Whereas a military grade encryption device may require EL6 or EL7. That's the evaluation assurance level. Protection mechanism for this product can include role-based access control, secure boots, tamper detection or hardware-based encryption. In summary, assurance level tells us how confident we are that a system is secure. Protection mechanisms are the technical tools and controls used to enforce that security. With this we have come to the end of part 2. I would like to thank you for the time that you have invested for this part. We will meet in part 3 now. This is your host Savit Pithal. Salian. Namaskar.